All right, well, good afternoon. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started? Uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, or should I use a microphone? And everyone, those back there, can you all hear me? Let's make it sure. Yeah, you could also move up closer if you'd like. That's good. That's great. Thank you so much for coming uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Carl Jackson. I'm with the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I'm a, a principal transit planner uh, at the organization. I'm also joined by uh, Anna. She's our intern from UMass who's helping us out with that, uh, with uh, this uh, project. And I wanted to thank the Hadley Senior Center. I want to thank uh, Nikki, Jane, and lots of other folks that have helped uh, today to get this going. Uh, so PVPC is working on a 2025, uh, what we call a coordinated public transit human services plan. Uh, now I know that's a kind of a mouthful, so we like to call it just the human services transportation plan. And so the purpose of this plan uh, basically is to make sure that we help to improve transportation services for um, our older adults, uh, those with disabilities, uh, and individuals that have a lower income through a better coordinated transportation system. Uh, now, the plan is required uh, by federal law to have a coordinated plan, and it's developed through a process uh, that's representative of the public, private, and nonprofit transportation providers, uh, human services providers, and participation from the general public. And this plan provides a framework, basically, for uh, the development of projects uh, for municipalities, towns, counties, tribal governments, regional transit authorities, and private operators to address the transportation needs uh, throughout the region. Uh, now, the current plan, which was adopted in 2020, is currently available on our website, uh, the Pioneer Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, pvmpo.pvpc.org. Uh, we also do have hard copies uh, as well that can be read. Uh, but the plan kind of gives you an idea of what's been done in the past, and we're just trying to um, update this plan for 2025. So a large part of the plan is basically um, assessing uh, regional uh, characteristics for the Pioneer Valley. Uh, the region includes 43 cities and towns um, within Hamden and Hampshire counties. There's a population of over 623,000 based on the census. And uh, if, you could look from, uh, if you could look at the uh, bar graphs, uh, seniors and people with disabilities, low income, are the uh, primary target groups that we're examining for this plan. And as you can see from the graphs, the Pioneer Valley has either slightly more or equal percentages of some of these target groups uh, within the region. And here is a current um, view or list of our uh, public transportation providers in the Pioneer Valley. Uh, the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, or PVTA, is the uh, primary um, service provider with over uh, 44 uh, fixed uh, bus routes and ADA paratransit service. Um, not too far from us is the Franklin Regional Transit Authority, which is kind of in the northern part of the region, provides some fixed route service, um, not, not so much here, but uh, throughout the hill towns, if you're all familiar with that area, they do provide uh, what they call a paratransit service and um, demand response service. Uh, we also have uh, providers, uh, Worcester Regional Transit Authority, uh, believe it or not, does provide uh, some service uh, in the uh, far um, in a southwestern part of the region, southeastern. Uh, we also get uh, funding through MassDOT and through uh, Massachusetts Councils on Aging, which help us uh, provide the senior vans. Um, and I'm sure Hadley has a senior van, is that correct? Okay, well that's good to know. Yeah, and a lot of that funding is provided through uh, the Councils on Aging and MassDOT. And this is a map uh, of the region, as I mentioned before. The, uh, the darker colors in the middle, uh, this, these are the um, communities that are served by PVTA. Um, over here in the green, this is FRTA, Franklin Regional Transit. We've got a few communities uh, served by Worcester. And if you notice, there are two towns, uh, Munson and Tolan, that have uh, no uh, service, uh, no um, service provider right now. Hadley is right here, uh, right in the middle of PVTA's network. But from what I understand, most of the service is just on Route 9. Um, after that, you're kind of on your own. There's no transit service. So thanks for letting me know about that. 
So as um, from the previous plan, we identified several needs and recommendations, including um, transit customer service needs. Um, there were service coordination needs between uh, PVTA and FRTA. Uh, we looked at specific projects that came out of the regional transportation plan, the RTP, uh, which was recently updated. Um, there are other uh, transpor uh, transportation needs provided in smaller plans throughout the region. Uh, we also looked at some of the shortfalls in Chapter 90, um, which state funding for uh, roads and um, road maintenance. And uh, I guess from what I understand, there was a lot of recent construction along Route 9, <laughs> um, but it looks like they're finishing it up. Um, oh, oh, they're still going? Okay. <laughs> Really? Wow. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, one of the things we look at is as they're improving you know, some of the roads, also providing, you know, sidewalks, you know, shared use paths, uh, bus pull-offs, and some of the uh, accommodations so we can have a more of a complete street, a multimodal network. And so for this uh, 2025 plan, this new plan will update area demographics. Um, it'll uh, and other regional characteristics based on the 2020 census, uh, actually the 2022, um, what they call the American Community Survey. It'll determine the status of the recommendations from the previous plan. It'll continue to identify any other customer service and coordination needs for transit providers. And it'll um, look at uh, service gaps uh, throughout the region. As I mentioned, um, there's some communities that have no regional uh, transit provider. There's some communities that have no senior uh, van or no transit or no paratransit for ADA and those with disabilities. So that's certainly a concern. And we'll evaluate new strategies and programs uh, to address uh, many of these service needs. And some of the new strategies, uh, just as an example, uh, the uh, FRTA, Franklin Regional Transit Authority, has started a new program. It's a on-demand service that allows passengers to book trips by phone or mobile app. Um, it's, it's an alternative to providing fixed route service. Uh, it's very popular, but currently it's only in Franklin County. So we're trying to see if we can get uh, some of the, um, the, the hill towns, uh, which are a little uh, further west of here, to have that program. Uh, PVTA recently started a, a pilot program uh, not too far away in Northampton. Uh, it's called the, uh, the NoHo Shuttle, uh, which uh, at one point uh, it was uh, just for seniors. Uh, now it's opened up to the general public uh, just to provide uh, greater uh, flexibility and coverage. Uh, and that uh, pilot is currently running now. Uh, and uh, actually service is free at this point. We've got a free tri-transit all summer long on the uh, PVTA system. And uh, as part of uh, MassDOT's Regional Transit Innovation Grant, several of our local transit providers uh, received over um, five million to uh, implement uh, transit connections, uh, both between uh, you know, PVTA, Hamden, Hampshire counties, and Franklin County, FRTA, uh, better connections. And they will identify other regional initiatives. And uh, some of these uh, grants and programs actually are programs that would help to bring people um, to work, to bring people to um, some of the hospitals, uh, senior centers, other activity centers as well uh, through uh, these uh, grants. So these are the kind of things that we want to identify in the plan and that we want to have listed. Um, so thus far, you know, we've had our community engagement. We've had five listening sessions, uh, and uh, those are in person. And we had two virtual meetings, um, which were well attended. And we're looking for any other uh, public engagement opportunities, civic activities and events, uh, meetings that we can kind of tag on to. Um, you know, today uh, we're hoping to gain uh, some, some of the people that came for the coffee with a cop. We're hoping that some folks would stay over. I'm glad you all decided to, to stay or, or just came for us. That's even better. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, and our comment period is open now through uh, December of 2024. So what I'd like to do now is just to open up and ask a few questions. Uh, I've got Anna here who's going to be jotting uh, some of this down. But um, are you satisfied with the current transportation services uh, in your community? OK, you say no. Uh, maybe you could tell us uh, why not. OK, well, maybe this gentleman, since you rose your hand. OK, OK. OK. 
I know we have the PTCA, but I have no idea where their stops are, okay. what their routes are. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, maybe we get some guidance from the state and Okay. Spell it out. What what the current status is, and solicit suggestions for how to improve it or expand it. Yeah, that's a good point, and we've heard that a lot. And um, you know, PVTA has put a lot of information. Oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think uh, from the back you can adjust it. A lot of PVTA's information is online, but that's not always accessible to you know a lot of people. So, like what you're saying, maybe uh, running an article, um, you know, in the paper. Um, they also do some rider training where they actually can take people from the senior center and show them how to ride the bus and where the bus goes. And so they do things like that as well. But I can certainly pass that along. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a senior center van, which is I think supported by Pine Valley and. PVTA. Oh, great. And okay. It makes a fixed loop. Mm -hmm. And there are maybe only eight riders who can actually access it. Okay. Um, we also have um, volunteer drivers to take people from the cabin to a medical appointments. Okay, great. We don't have anything else. Um, Route 9 PVTA is not accessible to most happy residents because Route 9 is commercial and most of us live in rural areas that are. You know, there's my house, for example, I'm only two miles from UMass, mm -hmm. two miles from Stop and Shop, but there's no bus anywhere near me closer than two miles. <laughs> oh, wow. So, okay. You know, it's, I'd have to walk two miles to get to either of those places. Wow. Yeah, both ways, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, could I ask you for the uh, senior van? Does that come any closer to you? No. Okay. You know, it's okay. A from here and around up, uh, and then down with mine and then back up with Okay, I it see. Might go, it might veer off um, if somebody uh, asks ahead of time, like three or four days ahead of time, for like maybe one or two streets hmm, off yeah. the route, but that's it. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully with the, um, the pilot program they have in Northampton is basically kind of a, what they call demand response. And so if that one's successful, maybe PVTA can expand it into the surrounding communities. Yeah. Right, where well, you can just call and you could say, this is where I want to go and schedule a time and they'll bring you door to door to where you need to go. Yes, sir. Quick question. Are you saying that the rules and schedules are available through, through your website? Well, not, not I, I know it's a little confusing, not for PVPC, but PVTA. Yeah, on their website, yeah, pvta.com has all their uh, schedules. But I know, you know, that's not always easy for people to understand or to download and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if, you know, they could even bring some schedules here, you know, for you all, you know, or do the rider trainings, like I was saying. And I can bring that to their attention. Yes. I live right here on the 9, mm -hmm. and I'm a mile away. And I do a lot of walking. I walk on the street. And there's a bus stop a little ways uh, near my house, and there's like a, like a poster there that tells where the buses go. And it just seems like it's you mass, you mass, you mass. <laughs> Every time, well, I really don't know where that bus goes, and I don't know, like, does it connect? So if I wanted to, could I go to Belchichap? Does it connect? If I wanted to, could I go to East Stanford or Williamsburg? I don't have a clue. Now, I remember when I was a little girl, that was a long time ago, my grandmother lived in East Stanford, which is not too far from here, and she would take the bus, and she would like go shopping in Hoyo, or she would take the bus from her house and go Northampton shopping, or even over to our farm. She'd go from East Hampton to Northampton to our farm, and she would take the bus. Mm -hmm. and there's no way that I can look at that poster on Route 9 and figure out where that bus goes. And not only that, what times? It looks like it starts like at like 5 in the morning and goes until 2 in the morning the next day. I mean, it's confusing even to when those bus services are available. Yeah, that's true. 
Right, right, I understand. Yeah, it, it isn't senior friendly. Yeah, well, and, and that's why, um, you know, PVTA, they, they do have a customer service line where you can call them and you can ask specifically, how do I get from here to here? Uh, but, you know, also with the rider training, you know, where they can actually come and they can actually show you all, you know, how to take the bus and where it goes. That's something that other communities have found very helpful, you know, and that I can uh, push and remind them. <laughs> you do, yeah. But again, there is a customer service number as well. Yeah. She and um, just a little ways close to that bus stop. Most of the rest of us, two to five miles from any bus stop. Oh, wow. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, Anna, could you look up the, the uh, 800 number for uh, PVTA? And maybe we can um, you know, put that up or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of things have changed, you know, and it's just everything is online. <laughs> But uh, that's, that's something that, you know, we just try to, you know, we need to make it accessible for everyone because there are people that don't even have access to internet or broadband, you know, so having paper schedules and rider trainings would be great. Oh, yeah. Well, I have uh, a little app on my cell phone, so I know how to use that to route and go to different places. But it takes a while to really know how to use that. Yeah. Yeah. And also real time. So if you're waiting outside there, and the bus schedule says, okay, at 2 o'clock, you are live. But good nice traffic is terrible. So it's always a delay. And so I have the real time that tells you, oh, okay, 10 minutes late, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be helpful, but I don't know whether it's possible or not, to have a real time device on the bus stop. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it would come um, 10 minutes late at 210 or whatever, you know. And also make it, I don't know how to make it easier for people, you know. I mean, we can post the, um, the bus schedule. Also, handouts. Now, I think they don't do handouts anymore. They depend on, or you go, you know, online and you download that, you make it your printout. Don't be nice, but in the old days, they have a bus schedule. Right No, that's a very good point. Seniors, but also low income people and have a, who can't rent or buy a house because they don't have cars. Mm. They honestly are not used to driving, they live in some country, but they're not used to driving. When mm. they get here and they find out, can't get anywhere without a car. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because there's no bus, they're used to having a lot of bus transportation. Right, right. And there isn't anywhere we are. Right, that's true. Yeah, especially if you compare it to larger cities like Boston, you know, where, yeah, you can just walk outside and there's the T, you know, or the buses are coming and everything like that. Yeah. I have a couple across the house from me, uh, across the street from me, who are renting their doc, doc students, or their adults in their mm -hmm. 30s, mm -hmm. um, at UMass. And they came here and rented the house and then discovered it was two miles from the nearest bus station. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And two miles to your mess, so mm. it is a it's a problem for some people. Right. For low income people not to have any anything near. Mm -hmm. They can't live here if there's nothing near. Right, right, that's true. Well it wouldn't be realistic to say, and let's trace this route. If I want to go to um, I live in Hadley, I want to go to Northampton, I want to go up to Williamsburg, and then maybe later in the afternoon go we'll see some friends to East Hampton and then come back to Hadley. Can't do that. Yeah, you, you actually can. Yeah, all those communities you mentioned are served by a PVTA. I don't, I don't know if Williamsburg is, but East Hampton, North Hampton, you know, Hadley, of course, you know, are all served by PVTA. And it's possible to go from, let's say, Hadley to Mount Holyoke to Amherst to UMass, back over to Smith, because I do go to these places. Yeah. But I drive. 
is that possible to do that? Yeah, in fact, a lot of those locations are on one book, one uh, bus route, uh, the B43, you know, serves a lot of those communities. Because there's an exchange between the colleges, you know, to the students in mass to take courses in the other places. And like some of the, yeah, so like some of the said, you never know where the stops are and the time schedule. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. so complicated. Yeah. It is, yeah. But, uh, but but this young lady uh, brought up uh, the fact that there's an app, right? Um, yeah, I, I had to call my stop bus track or something like that. Yeah, the, I that. okay, okay. There are a couple of them. I, I know how to use it, but yeah. it's complicated. It is, yeah. But but I'm wondering, as far as uh, you know, cell phone or smartphone use, is that pretty common for you all? Uh, okay. Well, there is there is a transit app. You know, and that's the one that's uh, primarily promoted by PVTA, the transit app. Yeah. And it does tell you exactly where the bus stops are, you know, um, what time the buses come, how many minutes you have left until they come. It, it gives you a lot of information, so that, that might be an option. the man ride to the nearest bus stop? Well, they're working on that. <laughs> Oh, um, well, you know, they have a pilot program that they're doing right now. It's a demand response program. In, uh, yes, PVTA has one in Northampton, and uh, it's demand response. And based on the success of that program, they'll determine whether or not they extend it to other communities. Mm -hmm. So I think we've answered that question. Um, my next question, are you all aware of any uh, transportation service gaps? Oh, yes, go ahead. Carl, I'm from Pelham. Oh, yes, okay. We have no bus service. Right. Except um, we have um, dial array. Right, and okay. Sometimes you use it in characters. Right. Um, but as you've heard of a recent session, uh, we are building a new housing complex in Pelham that will have 34 units mm -hmm. of low income folks, many of whom will need transportation to get to wherever we need to go. But I'm with the Council on Aging in Pelham, and I'm here representing seniors. 50-odd mm. seniors. We have about 500 seniors in Pelham, and at least 50 of them are over 85. Oh, and wow. Those folks are uncomfortable driving distances. Mm -hmm. Short distance. Familiar spot, but not far off. And we have two options for folks. One is Amber's Neighbors. <coughs> Excuse me, which includes Helen, and it's a volunteer service. So people can uh, request a ride, and somebody will take them to the doctor's office or whatever. But because of the high demand for that service, you can really only get one ride a week. Oh, wow. You need more than that. Um, so we see an extension of some kind of bus service to Helen as a way of enabling many seniors to stay in their homes and age safely there. Um, I think you've heard that one of the Amherst routes for mm -hmm. the PDTA goes to uh, Heatherstone Road and turns into Amherst Woods there. The Pelham Library Police Fire Complex is six tenths of a mile from there. Oh, wow. And that has a circular drive right. in the pocket. So it could be a potential place for both seniors who can get there, park there, maybe walk there. Although mm -hmm. you don't have a sidewalk, you know, because the walking is the term. But when this new housing complex is constructed, it will have sidewalks up to that complex. Oh, great. OK. Yeah, so OK. That would be helpful for folks that live there if there's a bus that they can get on there. Yeah, wow, okay, so just six tenths of a mile, huh? Six tenths of a mile. That's pretty close, okay. All right, yeah, I'll definitely pass that along to PVTA. I think, yeah, so it counts as a gap. I think you're talking about areas that are not covered, but to me it's a gap when I had, um, I had to have medical services and I never quite knew when they were going to be scheduled and could, you have to call ahead for P PVTA. And you, it's, a, it's a problem if you can't call ahead in enough time. Mm -hmm. So, to me, that's a gap. 
Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, and, and unfortunately, that's how they do their scheduling, you know, but I certainly understand that. Uh, but I know with this um, new demand response that they're piloting that you can call within an hour, you know, and then they can provide service. So, so they're working on that. But thank you. Excuse me, uh, currently, no. It's uh, free tri transit uh, for the summer, um, uh, but eventually, yeah, it's it's a trial. But eventually, it'll be the same fare as the uh, fixed transit, a dollar fifty. And actually, it'll be half that for seniors. Mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah. I can yeah. say I remember um, Paul Burns, the director of the PDGA, mm -hmm. um, said no, no ride would be over five dollars. That would be the I don't know what fares are going to be, but okay. Nice, nice. Well, that's good to know. Are there any any other uh, comments or yes? Is there any way like to have Uber just serve seniors? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't really have any connections with Uber. I know there's something called uh, Uber Health. You know that provides you know transit if you're going to medical appointments and things. So that you know, um, my Linda said you have to book in advance. You know, for the bus schedule, but you don't have to Uber. You know, maybe call one hour ahead or half an hour ahead. All right. If I, it would be helpful to the seniors or maybe um, people with disabilities or. Well, we can certainly identify it in our plan, yeah, because I know that it's come up for uh, Uber and Lyft. Is, is Hadley served by both of those companies, uh, Uber, Lyft, or any of those? Or you don't know? Okay, okay. Not, not really. I mean, okay. once in a while you can get somebody, but often. Yeah, often you can't. Oh, gosh. When is this um, um, on-demand or demand service? Is this scheduled to be delivered to various areas? Well, well, right now it's just Northampton. They're just trying it out there. Yeah, from I think it started in May and it goes through November. And then in November they'll assess and determine if they're going to continue it or expand it. I'm just wondering if that would be offered in Hadley in time for me to actually use it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got you. Well, I'll, I'll certainly pass it along. There's a lot of interest in it. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Logical point. Yeah, you really have to consider ridership as part of the mix. Yeah. And but also more importantly, changes in transportation modes. You know, uh, when will driverless vehicles, for instance, be available for? to uh, bring people to assembly points, to points, things of that sort, which is definitely something not that far in the future. Yeah, absolutely. You're right about that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, you know, speaking of technology, um, electric buses, uh, PVTA has several yes. electric yes. buses yes. that are running throughout the system, and they're going to be expanding that into their uh, paratransit, you know, and the senior van network as well, to so start adding uh, electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. There's a gap between the connectivity of FRTA at the park and ride and wait. Okay. On, on, on yeah, yeah, here, uh, near Sunderland. And PBTA, and if it could be adjusted, it would make it possible for one to get to the other to get to Amherst, for example. Yeah, in fact, they just received a grant uh, for that. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so they're definitely going to be addressing that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or any gaps? Um. Uh, I'm from Hong Kong, so um, we had good public transportation. But sometimes I didn't use it. But my sister, who we say, "Oh, I'm not going to the bus. It will not take me fast enough." So in our neighborhood. We did have a man, okay? I don't know who started. And you can, the van can pick up maybe, I don't know how many people, eight people or so. 
market and we share the, the cost. So it wasn't too expensive. And if you can have a, like every hour in your neighborhood, you know, yeah, a van contractor can run every hour if that's possible and eight people or ten people can ride on that. Um, it has to run often enough. Right. Including weekend. Weekend and uh, into the evening. Right, right. Now, what, was that was that run by any kind of a like a public authority, or was it just no, private. individuals? Okay, private. Okay, private. okay. okay. Uh, you know, PVP, PVPC, or, or some you know can contract, you know, contract with some private, like Uber. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I know how to say okay. Uber. <laughs> Yeah, but there there are a lot of uh, you know private companies that do uh, provide contract transportation. Uh -huh. So and that is on the you know on the weekend and into the evenings. Mm -hmm. And um, and if the rider has to pay something, would be cheaper. Right. You know, because you share the rides and then maybe PVPC some can subsidize that program. Right. Yeah. yeah. Don't have to pay so much. The riders maybe a dollar a trip, or depending on how far you go. Right, right. I hear what you're saying, but you know, just to be clear, PVPC we're just the planning agency. Oh, okay. You know, PVTA provides the public transportation. So, I know it's confusing. All right, any other uh, service gaps um, you can think of? All right, I can move to the next question. Uh, so, what other uh, destinations uh, should be included on the service area? Uh, you know, for instance, I know not everybody is familiar with the current transit routes, but you know, can you all think of popular destinations where you know you all would like to go? Or? That's a big word, popular. Okay. In Asheville. Okay. So there's not a whole lot of numbers, but it would be so wonderful. To Okay, you said Ashfield, Goshen, and what was the other one? Shelburne Falls. That Shelby Falls. Falls has the senior center in it, so there's pretty good transit from FRTA there, but still it's like four, four buses or so a day. Hmm. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily get you two doctors. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I'm assuming, but I could be wrong, that the current bus routes go to Amtrak and yes. Springfield if they need to go to Greyhound or Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. The problem for us would be to get to a station where you could go to those places. Yeah, or to a bus stop. Yeah, right. A bus stop. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you know, I can say for myself, I did take the bus here, and um, you know, there are lots of nice. Uh, in addition to the bus stops and the the B43 bus that goes along Route 9, you know, there are these new shared use paths that do make it easy to walk from the bus stop you know, into town. Now I know they don't go far enough out into the town, but at least to get to the library and to get to the center, it was fairly easy. Okay. If I can make, even though I've got suggestion, I applaud PBTA. Mm -hmm. I just think you've done an amazingly wonderful job. And there can be changes, but it's, I am, I'm impressed and I'm very, very grateful. Well good, I'll pass that along to them, thank you. All right, any other uh, destinations? Um, usually when we go to these meetings, people say they want to get to Boston, you know. <laughs> but um, I'm glad, ma'am, you pointed out that we'll get you to Amtrak, <laughs> and from there you can get to Boston. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. <coughs> Groups that will get us to other places where... Yeah, even to Worcester, yeah. We yeah. can get you yeah, to the Worcester commuter rail, and then you can go into Boston from there, yeah. Oh, sir? Yeah, hi. Um, I got stuck in Greenfield one time. I almost had to... 
spend the night here because I, I missed the bus, you know, and I don't know, it was like the last the last way back to, to, to this area yeah. from Greenfield was around like five or something or five thirty, I don't know. But in you miss that, there's no train and no bus or nothing to get back to this area. Right. I don't know if it's changed since then, but this was a few quite a few years ago. Yeah, I know, yeah, FRTA does run one route that goes from Springfield to uh, Northampton, um, but I think that's currently the only route they have, but um, they did uh, recently receive a state grant to actually improve connections uh, between, um, you know, our region and the uh, you know, FRTA area, so hopefully that'll incorporate uh, some of those needs. So there's no, I mean, if you want to go to Greenfield, you got to take the train, right? There, there is a bus. Yeah, there's, there's a bus that runs. Yeah, from Northampton. Yeah, FRTA does have kind of like an express bus that picks people up and brings them into Greenfield. Um, but it, you know, it doesn't operate throughout the day. It has limited hours that it runs. Um, yeah, and um, we were just talking about this uh, not having schedules, but uh, it is available online. <laughs> a schedule. Yeah. You know when uh, approximately the last one coming back here would be? I, I, I would just tell you to visit their website. Yeah, I don't have the yeah. specifics on that. Yeah. Any other uh, destinations? Uh, All I right. I had no idea what you were saying about, I heard somebody men mention like Asheville. And yes. Is there any transportation that goes up there? No, currently there isn't, um, but that's something I, I know they're looking into. Yeah, because you had mentioned Williamsburg, too. Yeah, I think they're doing some kind of commuter service that would serve Williamsburg eventually. Williamsburg is very good. From our it's a very good connectivity. It's just, it's an island that's good. Right, right, after Williamsburg. Gotcha. Okay, okay, gotcha. All right, well, yes. Yeah, well, those are development differences between the U.S. and Europe. The U.S. built the interstates and Europe built trains, you know, and so that's affected us, you know, yeah. decades later, you know, that America has always emphasized the automobile, you know, but a lot of that is changing, um, you know, with the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill, we've been able to fund a lot of projects, a lot of multimodal transit and rail projects, you know, so hopefully some of that's changing. Yeah, and with the uh, the east-west rail, you know, that's coming along to make track improvements to have more regular service. Now, one can afford a train from here to Boston or a train from here to New York that one can afford. Yeah, and they, they actually have added more train service between Springfield and uh, New Haven to connect to New York. So, yeah. Right, yeah, the, the Valley Flyer. Yeah, uh-huh. So there, there are lots of options. Uh, they just don't run as regularly as would be nice, yeah. Yes, that's what I was thinking. You've got to get to a bus station. Get to Montana. <laughs> right. That first, that first 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they call it first mile, last mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Okay. All right, well, I know we're losing some people, but <laughs> are there any other comments uh, anyone wants to share? I've got a funny story to tell you. Okay, go ahead. Years ago, I was trying to show my daughter how to use the bus, the PBTA, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, she was trying to get the, uh, she was at the, uh, uh, the junior high on Route 9. At any rate, she knew where that bus stop was, but she didn't know where, you know, where she was supposed to get off. She was trying to get to my office and I was over at UMass. So I, one day I decided, okay, we're gonna follow one of the buses and I'll point out along the way, you know, this is, this is the way the route is gonna take every time, or the route is gonna take every time. Well, we got to, almost to the university and the bus had stopped at one of the locations and I'm sitting there and waiting, waiting. Next thing I know, the driver's at my side window asking me, why am I following you? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> well, that happens. At least you tried. You know? <laughs> and she learned how to use the bus. Yeah, there you go. So something good came out of it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Um, if there are no other comments, um, this is my contact information if you need to reach me. I also have some cards I can hand out, and, and on the flyer also has my information as well, too. But I want to thank you all for joining us on this uh, listening session. We're going to incorporate this uh, into our plan and um, you know, look forward to hearing uh, anything else that you all have to share with me um, as this process continues. Thank you. Thank you. All right.